Hi folks, welcome to another Fusion Friday. Can we model chain and a pulley? Let's give it a shot and we're gonna do it a little differently than you might think. We're gonna cheat. File, new design, save it because it's not until you save it that you start getting auto saves in case it happens to crash. So the first thing to do when you're modeling a part like this McMaster car, sprocket, roller chain, all I'm doing here is trying to get a part number. So I'll grab this part number here, copy and paste it, and go to insert McMaster car component, paste it here. The reason I copy and paste is I find using the McMaster website in a regular web browser is a lot easier. Now I've got that product up, I can click on the CAD or product detail text, scroll down. You gotta pick a bore size here on this part and now save it as a step file. Click OK. This is awesome. We have our component. It's, and if you'll notice, it is a component. In it are a bunch of bodies. Excellent. Now let's go grab a piece of chain. Chain, roller chain. It was number 40. And we'll do this. Product detail, actually I didn't, yeah. part number, insert, paste the part number. And no matter what length you download here, it only gives you a short section you'll see here in a second. So it doesn't really matter what we pick for length. I actually wish you could download. Well, you'll see, it doesn't really matter. Click OK. So we've got our two, our chain and our sprocket. I'm gonna create a shaft for the sprocket to rotate on. Right click, new component. I'll call it shaft. And I'm actually gonna sketch it in place. So let's hide the chain by unclicking the light bulb here. I'll hit C for sketch. And if I make it on this plane here, one of the things you'll notice is I actually don't, that's, mm, you know, it's funny, when I was practicing for this video, that wasn't concentric. So I don't wanna trust that. Um, what I'm going to do is hit P for project. And if I click on this line, that gives me a center point that I know is concentric. Hit Q for press pull, click on this guy, and we'll just drag it out. It's like so. I'm gonna ground that, so right click on it over here and choose ground. That locks it in place, which is gonna let me create a joint. But before we create the joint, let's go up and activate the, whatever you call this, the top of the whole part. So right now we could drag this around. We want it to rotate on that shaft, and because I modeled it in place, I can do assemble as built joint. Pay attention to what it's asking you. Let your mouse hover here in the white and it'll say select two components. I'm gonna pick this one, I'm gonna pick this one, and now it says select the reference. That means the point of rotation. I'll click this point here, and now we have a rotating spur gear. Excellent. Now we gotta work on the chain. The problem with the chain is that the way we imported it is it's just one body. Uh, you can't, you can't, actually I really thought it would import as individual uh, bodies or even components, kind of like actually our sprocket did. You'll see here we've got a body that is the sprocket, we've got a set screw here and a set screw here. That's pretty cool. Uh, we don't have that with the chain, no big deal. And actually we're gonna do something that references the video we just did on de-featuring stuff in Fusion 360. Just amazing. I really just want one link. So I'm gonna just start deleting stuff. Click on it, delete, delete, delete. Oops, didn't wanna do that. Oops, I know, I see I don't wanna delete that right there. There we go. Kind of depends on what you delete. And one of these should have, so this should have a hole through it. And if I hear, if I delete this, I don't get what I want. So instead, this is so cool, we'll do create, extrude, 
Yeah, ignore this, continue. Click on this space here and just drag through. It's gonna do our cut. Awesome, just awesome. Now, technically, the chain links would be um, nested inside of each other, as you'll see here in a second. I'm not gonna worry about that right now because that's not the task at hand. Uh, what I am gonna worry about is the fact that I think what I'm about to do is probably not the best way uh, to what I like to call CAD etiquette or use Fusion 360, but I don't know a better way, so I would welcome comments below. Um, actually, I forgot, before I move forward, see all these delete faces? Every time I deleted something in the piece of chain, it was a parametric event, which is kind of cool because it means I can undo them, but here I don't want to. Um, so if I right click and just hit delete, See, that brought them all back. That's not what I wanted. So let's do this. Let's roll the timeline back to here. And hmm, how am I gonna do this? No. Convert, no, don't wanna do that. Okay, I, I think I figured it out. Um, I'm gonna change my window here. If I right click on, I guess some of them, or all of them here and right click and choose convert to DM or direct modeling, it got rid of one of them there. If I did it again, it seems to work. I can't really explain, there we go. I can't really explain that to be honest with you, but I don't really want all that parametric info there because that's what you're gonna see here is we get way too busy of a timeline even with a few tricks that I know. So we have one link of chain. Right click, copy. Go up to the top of your component or part file, right click and do paste new. Paste versus paste new. Paste new means it's a totally separate um, instance of it, if that makes sense. Whereas if you pasted it, instead of a paste new, and we change the shaft size here, it's gonna change in all of them. Um, okay, did I do this right here? Yeah, we're okay. So I've got two instances. One of the things I don't like that I was mentioning about the timeline is, is we've now got all of these capture positions that are gonna have to happen because if I go to create a joint, I either have to capture the position, which I'll do it now, you'll see it adds a event down here, which is annoying, or I can not capture it, but it consolidates it back to this same location, which is annoying because I don't want either to happen. So the only other way you can sneak by that is by using the light bulbs to unhide them and hide them. Otherwise, it's really difficult. You'll see if I don't capture the position, it's really difficult to kind of know which one you're selecting, again, unless you take the time to undo the light bulbs. So, not the end of the world, but I don't like it. Capture position, fine. J for joint, I'm going to join the center of this shaft. So if I hold the mouse over here and I click that coin to, i change my motion type here to revolute first. To the center of this shaft, click on the coin there, it's that simple. Now, like I said, technically the chain should be nested. I'm not gonna worry about that right here. We can right click, paste new again. Again, I have to capture position because it puts in the same spot. I'm gonna paste a bunch of these here real quick. I guess that's one thing you can do. You can do a bunch at once and then capture the position, uh, which saves you a little bit. So you can do these joints. I gotta give them credit. You can do these joints really fast. Can we screw one up here?
Oops. I somehow goofed on one of them. There we go. So it doesn't look like much, partly because nothing is grounded, so I can't move individual links. But if we take one of them and ground it, so notice how I clicked on this one, and when I do it, I see the underlines. That tells me which component I'm clicking on. Right click and ground, and continue. And now I can move them a little bit around. So now I've got my linked chain. Pretty cool, right? Um, now, to be clear, I don't think this is a, we're going to get this to really work, partly because, well, we'll talk about that at the end. The best thought that I have is if we start the easy way, it would be to create a joint. And if we did a revolut, we would say, I want the chain, let's say I have this joint here. I'm going to click that center coin. That's really important right there to rev revolve in around the center of this pocket here. So if I hold my mouse here, you can see I've got the triangle. That's the middle one. I want to click that. So hold the control key on your keyboard and that locks this in place. And I can now move my cursor up and click that coin. So that looks right. Click OK. Oops. What's my error? Oh, that's because I had one of these grounded. That's why. Un unground. Okay, save. So we're it sort of works. You can see I've got that motion, and if I pull this, I'm 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 moving the uh, sprocket, and I can even go to the next step. I can hit J again, and I can click continue here. Oops, this that's annoying. So let's I guess capture the position. Hit J here, and let's say this one. If I hit the center of it right there, would be in, see here, it should be this pocket. Click on the center coin right here. I think this will kind of work. Um, so you can see the rest of it would need to fit in there. So again, we're, we're kind of getting it. Here's the problem. That revolute joint is going to keep them inside the sprocket. There's no way as you rotate, like if we added a second pulley to have them come out of the sprocket and continue along a path. And I think the way other CAD like SOLIDWORKS handles that is you have a chain that travels along a path. So that's not what we're doing here. And I'm not, I don't think Fusion 360 can do that, at least not right now. That doesn't mean we can't have a little bit of fun here and learn something from it. On um, the other thing I tried to do, I delete these two joints is, let's see here. I move this away now. The other thing I tried to do was J for joint, continue. I tried to use like a pin slot or another joint type and I still can't get it. No matter what I pick, we're basically confined. I think I was trying it over here. Um, you're confined to a vertical slot in here. The last thing that you can do, if we let's see here, if we redo or, uh, a couple of our joints, this is cool. So if we put this in here, and we put, let's see here, let's see we put, oops. Joint. We put this one in here. So we've got a couple of joints. Oops, didn't didn't work. Well, I think I only need one joint to show this off. Is you can do something very cool, but but um, well, you can do something very cool here called contact sets. So under assemble, I'm going to enable contact sets and take a look what it says. Activates contact analysis between com components. So click enable 
and now we've got to create one. So I'll go to assemble, new contact set, and what are the bodies of the components? Well, it'll be between, say, this and that. Click OK. Now what's going to happen is as you move, see that? As you move this, it's only going to allow it to, it's basically not going to allow interference like in the real world. So it's actually working pretty well right now. Um, now it shouldn't be letting me do that. It is driving it. Interesting how there's a little bit of a glitch on there. The, see if we can do it with another uh, part. So, oh, you know what it is? It's that the component that I picked doesn't have the big diameter, it has the smaller diameter. So that's what's driving the contact there. So I'll do another assemble, new contact set. Let's say it's between, what will it be? This and this, click OK. So now if I pull that up, it'll start to behave like something that behaves in the real world in terms of interference. The problem is that this is incredibly computing intensive to the point where you add a few of these and you can't, you can't even use your model for demonstration purposes, let alone really work in it. So this is not how you drive automation, but it can be useful and it can be really helpful. Um, you can quickly turn it on and off, which is again, uh, so you can have it, but use it where you need it. So I'm going to leave it at that, folks. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. If you have any specific fusion topics you'd love to see, we'd love to cover them. Shoot us an email or comment below. Otherwise, see you next Friday, folks.